Today, we're talking about some of my favorite tips to help you shoot better sports videos. If you haven't shot much sport before or fast paced action, it can be quite intimidating when you're first getting started. These tips should help you out. Know the sport. This tip may or may not be obvious, but having a good understanding of the sport you're filming will help you to get much better results. Knowing what the players will be doing, where they're positioned, how they score, it's things like this that are great to know in order for you to get the shots you need. A good idea if you've never filmed or even seen a certain sport would be to attend a training session or two. This should give you plenty of understanding of the game fundamentals and where you can be positioned during an actual game. It's also a great opportunity to get to know the team you're filming if you haven't worked with them before. This helps to build up a relationship and perhaps get you access to better areas and possibly even more work. It also wouldn't hurt to do a Google or YouTube search to give you the absolute basics if needed. Know your gear. I can't stress this enough. This tip is vital for pretty much anything you're going to film, especially where things only happen once, such as sports, events, and weddings. The last thing you want is to miss a once in a lifetime shot because you are messing around with settings. Get to know your camera like the back of your hand. Understand what every button does, where everything is in the menus. Get to know your camera so well that you can switch frame rates, change aperture, anything you need to do, basically without looking. This is obviously easier if you own your own equipment, but if you're renting, you can always get the gear a couple of days before, especially if you haven't used that particular make or model before. The type of video you're making and the budget will obviously determine what gear you actually need. If you want smooth, slow motion tracking shots, you may want to use a gimbal. If you want fast paced, high intensity cuts, you may want to shoot handheld or use an easy rig. Whatever it is you do use, get to know it well and understand how to use it effectively. For me, I like to mix it up. So I use a variety of equipment from handheld to monopod or tripod to gimbal. I'm usually using zoom lenses that cover the basic focal ranges from 24 to 70 and 70 to 200. This gives me plenty of options from wide to tight. I don't personally own something longer like a 200 to 600, but that would be a great option as well, especially if you are limited to where you can be positioned during the game. Get your settings right. This tip follows on from the previous one. Getting your settings right is so important. Not all sports are the same. Some are much faster paced than others and you'll need to adjust your settings accordingly. It again also depends on what you'll need for the final edit. Will you be shooting 24 frames per second or using a higher frame rate for slow motion? Will you be filming in natural light or under stadium lights? It's things like this that you need to consider before the actual shoot day but knowing how to change your settings quickly if needed is essential. Personally, when I'm filming sport, it's usually 24 frames per second 4K or 120 frames per second full HD. Because of this, I have two custom dials set up on my camera so I can quickly switch between them. Shutter speed has a big impact on the motion blur in your shots. If you have a standard shutter of 180 degrees or a 50th of a second, the motion blur may be too much for fast paced sports and your viewers may lose track of the action. I like to use a 90 degree or even 45 degree shutter angle to reduce the motion blur when capturing fast paced sports. This also helps to add more energy to shots as well. This is quite a common technique, famously used in the opening beach scene in Saving Private Ryan. Less motion blur means objects in your shot will be sharper, but this makes for a more jarring shot. So it all depends on how you want the final edit to turn out. You won't have control of the lighting during real sports games, so personally, I like to dial in my settings beforehand and use a neutral density filter to adjust my exposure as needed. This is essential anyway when filming outside, but it's likely that your exposure will change over time. If you're filming inside or under stadium lights, your exposure shouldn't change too much, but it's worth keeping an eye on. Stadium lights and old indoor fluorescent lights can impact your image with flickering if you haven't got the right shutter dialed in. You may have to adjust your shutter speed as needed to compensate for the frequency of light, especially if you're shooting at 120 FPS. Now let's talk about aperture. Keeping players in focus can be tricky, especially when they're moving so fast. For this reason, it's better to use a higher aperture, for example, f8 to f11, to give you a better chance of keeping everyone sharp. Using a longer lens helps to compensate for using a higher aperture, as when you're zoomed in with a 70 to 200, for example, your image will be more compressed, bringing the background closer, but still giving you that separation between the background and your subject. If it's a slower sport, you can get away with opening up your aperture a bit. I often do still like to shoot at 2.8 with a variable ND so I can isolate certain players. This combined with 120 FPS can get you some great results. For ISO, I leave it at the native ISO, indoors and outdoors, which is 800 in S-Log2 on the Sony a7 III. There are only certain venues where I need to adjust this slightly. I always shoot in the log profile, 
unfortunately, a lot of sports are played outside, so it's only those poorly lit venues where I need to worry about light. Something you may overlook on the day is white balance, so make sure you get that dialed in when you first start shooting. Bring a grey card or x ray passport if you have one. Finally for settings, let's talk about focus. I've shot a lot of sport events using manual focus with my old 5D Mark III. However, I now much more prefer to use the Sony's incredible autofocus. It's much more reliable than my eyes. My focus area will switch between wide, zone and spot, depending on the shot. If it's a wide shot, I tend to be on wide, but if I'm focusing on a player, I like to use zone or spot. Make sure you know how to switch between focus modes quickly. I like to have it as one of my custom burns. If you have it available, face and eye detection is a great feature to turn on, although this can easily get lost if you have lots of players running through your frame. Again, having something like this as a custom burn is a good idea if you quickly want to turn it on or off. Preparation is key. Be prepared as much as possible before game day. Have all of your equipment ready. Batteries charged, gimbal balance, cards formatted, anything you need for the day. Get it sorted beforehand. Check the weather if you're filming outside. It may sound stupid, but double check the location of the game and match start time. You don't want to get caught out by any last minute venue changes. You'll want to make sure you arrive early so you've got plenty of time to set up and you can get some shots of the warm up, huddle and team talks. Make sure you have your shooting pass or that your name will be on the gate so that you can actually get into the venue. These are just some examples. You can never be too prepared. Look after yourself. This last tip is arguably the most important. Don't forget to look after yourself. You may be shooting a couple of games in a day or for long periods of time. Bring some food or drink if necessary. Make sure you have sun or wet weather protection available as needed. Bring any kind of support you may require. Personally, I like to use a wrist support, especially if I know I'm going to be using a gimbal for a long period of time. Put down the camera when possible to give your body a break. You may not realise it at the time, but you'll definitely feel it afterwards if you strain yourself too much. You will only be able to do your best job if you look after yourself first. I hope you found these tips useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on cinematography and filmmaking in general, you can subscribe here if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.